and welcome to the Rondo. Get Rondo's back. back. Like you know what I'm saying? It's a serious line, man. That you perfected it. Yeah, 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 no, it took practice. You know what mm. I'm saying? Little Christmas special. Yeah, yeah. We're back here in the studio where it all began this uh, week. <laughs> back home, man. Yeah, back, back home. home. <laughs> Big up Soapbox Studios. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And on today's, well, there's been plenty of Premier League football over the Christmas holidays, mm. uh, kind of games every three, four days. It's, uh, it's one of my favourite times of the year when it comes to Premier League football, man. It's just... Bacon it's off at home. Fast. It's thick and fast, man. Yeah. It just comes mad quick. comes quick. And I feel like it, it really starts to... If you do well in this Christmas period, mm. it does a lot for the season because there's so many games. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, man, I think I feel, feel like it's where, you know what I'm saying, you, you know, people start to separate. You know what I mean? You know, people who aren't really in the title race <laughs> start, starts to show a little. But anyway, man. You started the digs already, fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on today's podcast, we're going to discuss, you know, a lot about all the big topics from the games that have been going on. So we're going to start off with Chelsea. Mm. Going to be questioned on whether they finally, since they actually won two games in a row. Oh, um, and then we're also going to be talking about... That's right, you uh, won two games in a row. Yeah, that's yeah, bro, we're here, man. We're here, we're here now. Yeah, yeah. For you, man. Still. Was going to do a little spotlight on their January transfer window. It looks like Conor Gallagher may be sold, which has been a topic of controversy for, me, for many Chelsea fans. We've got a, mm. a huge Gallagher fan here, here with us. Mm. Then we're going to move on to Arsenal. Uh, they obviously lost early in the week to West Ham, uh, a game that could be detrimental to their title race, but it is quite early on. But some think that some seem to think that it has major signs. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Teta's overall job and how it relates to Klopp's Liverpool because that seems to have come up a lot this week. We're going to talk about West Ham, you know, how they're doing well in the league. I think they're sixth at the moment. They're doing very well. Mm. But a lot of people have questioned David Moyes. He, it looks like he's going to get a contract extension. Some West Ham fans don't agree. So we're going to, we're going to look into whether that should be the case. And then um, we're just going to go in a final topic. What's the final topic here, guys? I'm just looking at the agenda on my phone. Oh, we're going to talk about whether the quality of the league has actually gone up, as it was a point that Carragher made on Sky Sports, so we think it's an interesting one. We've seen a lot of the top teams drop a lot of points to the teams lower in the table. Mm. It seems like going away to any game now, to any team now, it's quite tough. Even at home. Yeah. Even at home, team, teams are slipping, but... Yeah. You know, any away game now, I'm always a little bit worried. You know, you know them ones like, if you don't get that goal... You know, kind of early on, you start it thinking. Trouble, thinking it could be a long it might, day. It like. might be a long day. So, so we're going to talk a bit about it. But on today's podcast, you got your boy A hosting. I forgot to even introduce myself, and mm-hmm. I got my guys. Mm-hmm. Tell us, man. Why are you a little yeah, bit surprised to start saying our names and that? You know, nah, I don't see that rather than me saying my own name. Why can't you say it for? Right, I got my guy Jalen. Introduce me as a guest. <laughs> right, okay, guy, I got I mean, my guy Jalen. You're, you're not a guest. You're a host, though, though man. You're a host. You're, right, you're, you're not a guest, though, bro. The viewers you're need even to. You're a co-host. They need to tell you how to how to introduce the show properly. Yo, you're five, not a guest. We're five minutes in. We ain't even got onto the first topic yet. You're not a guest. Crazy. Right? Right? All right. Well, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> such a hit. Yeah. Right, you can man. tell by this guy's attitude. We've got Jalen in here, man. Yeah. I'm sure you guys this place. And someone you ain't had for a little bit of a while. We got my guy Trey, man. Tell him something, man. We're back. We're back, man. You know, might be Conor Gallagher's biggest biggest fan, but we're here, man. So we've got some. Okay, real cool. topics to dig into today, man. All right, starting off with Chelsea. Obviously, you guys beat Luton 3 mm. 2. Um, yeah, a game that looked like he had control and then was quite, was, was a little bit of a scrap uh, in the end. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on the games? Do you know what? I would even compare it to the the other game you won this week, the Palace game, where I'd say we actually like had control, was doing well in terms of how his player was creating chances and not finishing. And that put us into like a kind of techie predicament I think this was the complete inverse where we didn't actually have any control like there wasn't really any point in the game where I felt yeah this is Chelsea's game like we're dictating play mm. got the game under control our midfield's popping we're like building up the, like there was none of that we literally just like soaked up the pressure well done well defensively I, I think Luton was trying to do this thing where they're sort of playing out from the back and trying to do a long ball over the top um, either like a long switch ball um, from the right to left but Mano Gusto was dealing with that quite well. Um, Sil was having a good game, as always. Um, so we were just dealing with the pressure. And then when the chances came, we just scored. I think that's something that we've lacked. Um, mm-hmm. I think big up Cole Palmer for just, just being a baller, fam. Just what what a player that guy is. What, what, a, what a baller that guy is. So you were really impressed with him? Yeah, 100%. I think in terms of um, who we need to kind of have as the first name on the team sheet going forward, it's Cole Palmer. 
think it might be him still. Okay, do you feel like Chelsea should him. build for him? You think he should be the star of the show? <sighs> yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely when it comes to um, t- teams where, where we're trying to attack and mm. kind of have a bit more freedom to do that. He seems um, to have a bit of that star quality. Uh, oh. I, I don't want to say yes prematurely in it. I think okay. I, I definitely like what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you can definitely see there's there's a lot of talent there. This is a great player. He's very creative, um, and he's just so technical on the ball. Like he he knows what he wants to do, and more often than not, he's he's going to be able to pull it off. I think his issue might be how he combines with the rest of the team, okay. um, and sort of what are attacking phases look like mm. I, I don't think there's really too much um consistency with that at the moment yeah. and that might be an issue going forward i think yeah, like even right now i can't tell you who who are that like, front four is going to be for the next game I, mm. I, like, I don't even know if we're going to play with front four we might be yeah. four three three okay. yeah. yeah like today we had jackson left wing bro up top um noni right wing palmer in the middle um i, I Firstly, I definitely want to see Palmer in the 10 more going forward anyway. I yeah, think. he's nice though. Yeah. I don't think he's a winger. And, and I think we actually have wingers. So it's like to put him there when we actually have guys that can win. Um, Noni today, done he's well. Done well, yeah. Took his goal well. Done his defensive side well as well, which I think was a problem for Poch um, with Noni in general. But, mm-hmm. you know, his, his defender was on point today and grabbed his goal, second goal this week. So I'm yeah. happy to see him. I want to talk a bit about, more about Noni, but I just wanted to give Palmer his props, man. Like, mm. I feel like, I mean, I said in the chat, man, I feel like he definitely had Curry Goat this week. <laughs> like, he's playing with that seasoning again, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the the quarter black is showing. Like, I can't, like, like you telling me that ball roll. No, nah, come on, man. That's, 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 that's the coldest that's, goal I've seen. That's a black time, brother's though. flair. That, that, that goal was cold. That goal was cold, so. I ain't seen that yeah, level nah. of composure, like, in a Chelsea attack. In a while, yeah, yeah, word. word. Yeah, Composure is actually thought. a good word to use. Still, mm-hmm. a lot of your guys lack composure. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. you can just tell they're they're so that like, they play so young, but they are they are a lot of them do. No, nah, like, but I'm even talking about the old, the old teams though. Yeah, even like, always <laughs> had that, like, huh? even the times when Chelsea were winning Champions League and that though, like their attackers always looks like they're missing oh, something, right. and, mm-hmm. and they, they they never really had a guy that scored like more than ten goals consistently. It's crazy. I remember the season even that. Like, I think Jorginho was your top scorer. Yeah, yeah. And I mean? that was like eight pens as well. <laughs> so it was like, but um, but my question is, um, if if you see Palmer as the number ten, mm. guys are bought in a lot of midfielders. People speculated whether you'd play, you know, Enzo, Levy, and Caicedo together as a three. Mm. Like, there's only you start two a very spots important there. Name though, him. Yeah, obviously Gallagher's there as well. So, <laughs> but there's only two sure spaces in that pivot. Respect. If if Palmer's yeah, yeah. like the the number one on this on the team sheet, then. Obviously, mm. four can't go into two, innit? Yeah. So who's like the best pivot? pivot? <laughs> I mean, me personally, fully fit, everyone's fit and active and at their best level. I want to say Lavia and it's it's between Gallagher and, and Caicedo. Okay. I'll be real. I think... Um, Gone to your head, pick one. <laughs> I'm trying to put the agenda aside, man. But it's, uh, it's tough. It's tough. I think... Um, I'll say Kaisodo just because I think he gives a little bit more positional um, stability in terms of like he'll actually sit in that kind of DM position okay, yeah. and kind of lock it up. I don't necessarily, I still want more from him. Yeah. I'll be honest. I, there's still a lot more that I want. I think, I don't know, like you kind of watch him and, and he looks like someone that knows that he can play ball but just ain't ain't got the rust off yet. Mm. But bro, like we're in December, you've had four or five months of ball, like, why is he Yeah, he doesn't really there? exert his, you know, his personality on the pitch. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You don't feel 100%. it too much on the pitch and it's like, 100 million silent. Like, you know, I, I want to notice yeah, you. Yeah, like, he, ain't seen a lot of howlers from Caicedo despite, uh, apart from his debut. Um, <laughs> but you don't see a lot, I don't see a lot of games where I'm like, okay. This is Caicedo's game. He's Caicedo's that's, that's, right. that's not really the surprising one though. This guy left Enzo up completely like, Oh. That wasn't even in his like. It nah. came down to two, and he said no. Nah. So you said something interesting. You said that like Casado's not really left his mark on the game. I feel like Enzo's in that same bracket. Yeah, like, yeah I can't really say there's been a game. Where I said, yo, Enzo's hoot. He's 100 percent being the best midfielder on the pitch. He created ten chances. He done his jewels like one his jewels worked back, made a sick tackle, pinged it like. That's you don't great. really see that from no, him. Yeah. There's yeah. only I, one I, person I, you really I see that from think, in the team. I, I still think quality wise, he's the best out of that four. 
Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. In terms of being the best football player in our in our squad, it's probably Enzo. so. If you so, if you were gonna choose like the ideal partner out of the other three, Bear Man Palmer's now the ten. Who is that? The ideal partner for Enzo or yeah. the ideal partner. Like if you were to build a two and you just said these guys are gonna have a run of ten games. What what am I expecting Enzo to do in this team? Bro, it's up, to you, it's up to you. But, bro. but that's what I'm saying. Like he he's one of them profiles where it's like it's so versatile. You could. You don't really know could, what his role is. I don't know, man. I just feel like in a forty-three-one, like. No, but, but but just before you kind of get so for you right now, Enzo's fourth choice. Yeah. In that pivot. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, yeah. percent. <laughs> so, but, so, but so, so he's signed for one hundred five million. So you think he's a bum? I'm not gonna say he's a bum. I, I think, and I don't know if 100, it's a potch 105 thing. million and he's fourth choice. He's a bum. I don't know if it's a potch thing. I don't know if it's a Chelsea thing. Right now, he's not been able to like <laughs> implement himself into this team. <laughs> I, I personally didn't even expect him to do that anyway because I I don't think firstly I, I don't think he was 105 million signing anyway but I don't think he's the kind of player that you get to like transform your whole team oh, okay so oh. pe- people put expectations on him which I don't think is fair for his profile okay but at that same time if you've come at that price tag like, you've got to show me. You have but he's a playmaker, that. man. He's meant to ele- playmakers are meant to elevate that team. Like, but is he a deep team. line playmaker? Is he like a number ten, like high? I don't see him as a number ten. I think, I think no, the, the formation to me he's, and the personnel suits him. Like we discussed before yeah. the season started. Like if you if if you're looking for an ideal partner for for someone like Enzo, realistically, it would have been someone like a Declan Rice, like someone who could cover the ground and do the dirty work. Gallagher. Yeah, and I guess if you want to say Gallagher is that type of person but they don't play that well together because Gallagher yeah so it's like it's it's a bit confusing really as to why he hasn't clicked yet but as as I said I still think going forward he's like he should be the number one option in that in that I feel like he might not be too bad with Lavia I I think they're too similar Mm -mm. okay true but then I think maybe if you let then then who's gonna go and ball ball win I think is the problem because Lavia don't really like to move around a lot he he can he should be Caicedo but I don't know Caicedo's not really he's fat man Huh? He's fat. Really <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I'm deep in it. No, he kind of is. He kind of is. Like Casado was making a lot more ball recoveries when he was at Brighton. <laughs> He's and actually a big. And, and I don't. He don't really move much. Yeah, but I think that's mm. more due to the fact that they were the way that they pressed was different, and it like it was a lot more of a, a man-to-man system where he's okay. only responsible for one person in it. Now he's having to cover like actual spaces rather mm, than yeah, just yeah, one yeah. player in it. So I think his decision making is a bit rash at times. Like he, he jumps, he jumps into situations which he doesn't need to jump mm-hmm. into as a, as a DM, and I think he doesn't really understand that's his responsibility. Is like he's the last line of, of the midfield. And his defensive IQ is not. It's weird. Not, not that pattern. I think maybe play him as being Roman because I do still think. But, but I've not seen enough of him. Like I've not seen him do that well enough to suggest. Oh, like no, let him roam. Yeah. So that, like. A bit tired, man. I don't know that that you guys got quality there in it. I, yeah, I think it's just finding the, the the right blend and the right system. Because even with that, we still got um, Carney to come back as well. Oh, so you look as key there. He's yeah. a baller. He's a, he's Let me a, not even he's say a good too much. Player, what? Huh? You rate him? It's not that I don't rate him. I just don't think he's. I don't think he's ever really gonna start in that team. No. He could though. I think he's a good squad member. You might could take. Yeah, he's a good squad member, but that, like he could play LC on Barcelona and and ball there. Hundred uh, percent. I don't see he's, a, he's a couple of years from that. No, I don't, I don't, bro, I don't, I don't he, who they got playing there right now? Havertz. Yeah, but it's he's, aiming he's definitely better than Havertz. It, no, Havertz is a bit more mature, yeah. bro. He's gonna like Kenny's gonna drift in and out of games. I don't think it's that. Do you know? Nah. Do you know? Is I don't think it's that. I just think the player who he's competing with is Cole Palmer, innit? and he's not better than him. So no, he's yeah. not. Were, so like, where else is he gonna play? He's not gonna play. He's in gonna the be pivot. second ten. He's gonna be second. For yeah, like he's always gonna be behind. So I just don't. Like when you're talking about him, then he's injured, and that is just a bit like I don't really see the impact. He's an impact he's squad top. player, but yeah, mm. not 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 first eleven. Anyway, guys, we've got to move on. So I want to move on to the sailor Gallagher. So I want to round up Chelsea soon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, All right. So obviously, decision. yeah. Um, it looks like so. I mean, you've had some interest in from Fulham. Apparently, the interest from Spurs has ramped up. Mm. Uh, Chelsea want to sell him for around forty-five million. It's probably because it's going to be a pure profit signing because yeah, yeah. you guys have, you know, basically completely cocked up in terms of. FFP and kind of overspent. What's your thoughts on on the Chelsea owners looking like they want to do that? Because it's definitely not from Poch. Yeah, um, I mean, me personally, if, if you know me, you know I'm a massive Conor Gallagher fan, I think. <laughs> As you mentioned before, um, having midfielders that can implement themselves into games and, you know, make their presence be felt, I think he's the one midfielder that you can say 
every game that like, he's made himself known. He's he's done something that you know. Okay, cool. Conor Gallagher, sorry, Conor Gallagher is hundred percent playing this game. Um, I think in terms of midfielders, he's been our best consistently throughout the season. Um, he's captained us for the last however many games, and you know, led us led us two wins. Um, I think to lose someone like that that's had that much influence mm. um, in our team. And, you know, like, when you look at um, the the stats, who's, like, doing the most tackles, most interceptions, mm-hmm. most, like, presses, most pressures, winning the ball back in the final third, winning the ball back in the second third, and then even looking at, like, from the attacking phases, who's creating the most chances for us. Oh, wow. Um, who's not, not having the most shots, but, like, our midfielders that are having, like, mm-hmm. the most shot selections that are playing mm-hmm. at that time. Like he's he's top of all the stats all the time. Hey, you love the, this guy. Bro, you like he's no, than no, but I'm saying like, <laughs> yeah, what? Like everything I've said just now is 100 percent what you expect from Enzo. Enzo's not doing it. Gallagher is. So so why am I starting Enzo over that? Yeah, stuff, he's not. But yeah, everything else. But no, no. But even all the playmaking stuff. Like, yeah, like he's created no, I, I the do, most chances from one, one question I will ask you. I, co- I, I agree. Like I think Gallagher's been your best player, and I'm not sure why you uh, the board want to sell him. But would you say that? He's been your best player because your midfielders have underperformed, though. Um, yeah, to an extent, but that's not my fault. If you lot are underperforming and I have to pick up your slack, then I'm now doing five different jobs because you can't do your one. So for that's you, your fault. Step so, up. So for you, he should absolutely not be for sale. No way. No way. And if he does, and if he do, and if he is sold, what's your viewpoint on that? I'm supporting whatever team he goes to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on that one. I'll be real because no, like, you're moving back. I think it's I think, just such a bad decision. I think with Conor Gallagher, it's like he's a player that gives you a, a good floor level in, in the squad so it's like if you need if you need somebody to come in and do a job when other people aren't being reliable and you guys obviously have young players that are very like inconsistent and that I feel like this is what I don't no like it's not a, it's not a vibe but it's just I I, like. in my opinion like Gallagher's someone in your squad that you need just to come in and, and be a reliable option to come in and just shore up the shit do you get what I'm saying sometimes mm. and I feel like that's what he's been for Chelsea this season in midfield but I don't feel like out of the four players He's the best. Like he's probably he's probably out of the four. If we're talking about talent and quality, he's probably he's probably the worst. Yeah, if we're, if we're being honest yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I agree with that. In terms of reliability, he's probably at the top in it. So selling him in, in that regard to me yeah. is a mistake. Mm-hmm. Um, and and selling him to someone who could potentially be like rivals to you, man, for the next mm-hmm. couple of years as well in Tottenham, to me is even worse. Well, I mean that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, so that's I mean that's who you're looking to overtake mm-hmm. over the next few seasons. So I, I think yeah, I, you, I think strengthening the rival as well is just. It's you know, weird but decision. you're not stre- You know what my opinion is. I think right now it will be it will be dumb to sell him because it's like he he is at the end of the day he is the best performing midfielder right mm-hmm. now. Poch really likes him, but if I were the owners, I would tell Poch right. Listen, you can have the guy for now, but I'm not gonna lie. Like it's gonna come a time where you know we need to. We need to cut ties. Whether maybe maybe they try and wait till the end of the season, maybe they wait till January it, next year. Because how long is he under contract for? I think no, nah, he didn't just sign a new one. I, I'm not even sure. I think he's got like two, three years left. Yeah, exactly. So maybe just wait a bit. They probably want to get the most amount of money, but I think mm. it's worth making ten million less or whatever it may be, nah. and just sell him later. Nah, I, I think oh, you, even you the profile he has, not bro. Like his pro, oh, that on, that destroyer profile. He's a destroyer. That's like. Semi comfortable on the ball. I'm not gonna say his on the ball quality is sick, but but he can do something on the ball. The chance he made for Jackson against Palace yeah. is is like the the kind of example of that. In general, Gallagher creates like one or two very good chances every game. Mm. So it's, it's like he's he's doing every job that he needs to do. Why is he being penalised? His, his IQ is not the best in terms of what, like in terms of positioning. Like he does a bit of ball. Ch- I was watching him today, right? Because I was more on your side because mm. Denzel was. Marcus. <laughs> hey, whatever that guy be calling himself, he should be here. Anyway, basically in the chat, Marcus was um mm. was getting on to you about when you, you were giving Gallagher prop and saying that you mm-hmm. don't want him to be sold. And he was saying that Gallagher often vacates, which which poses an issue for yeah. Chelsea, often this uh leaves Caicedo isolated. I wasn't really agreeing with him, wasn't really hearing it as much. Mm. I watched him today, I can't lie, he does it, you know. <laughs> so so <laughs> So what I think it is, I think his role in the team generally is that See, in those kind of defensive phases, he kind of joins in with the striker to be that kind of high press. But because he's also like uh, box to box, essentially, he can do that and then track back. Yeah. So he does vacate spaces, but at the same time, it's like, I'm looking at Caicedo again and saying, bro, like, you should know how to deal with that. Do you know what I mean? To be fair. It's, it's not like he's being like isolated and, and you catch him on counters and it's 3v1. It's just yeah. no, like, like Gallagher's gone up to press that's not and Caicedo's there. And because he doesn't have 
defensive IQ or, or good positioning. He's kind of reactive to the situation. Rice gets left on his own. And if he was playing 4 3 3, Caicedo would be covering that space there anyway. There you go. So and I think it must be an instruction from Poch to, for Gallagher to join the press. So 100%. they talk about him being vacated, but maybe it's Caicedo that can't deal with it. Yeah, there you go. So it's that's not, that's not. two two hundred million pounds worth of players that that has to be filled in by by one man, and then now you have to sell the one man for FFP. Like, yeah, to but me, they, it don't, but they don't have resale value right now. Mm. You sell their man, you're sending them at a loss, so they have to hold them. Yeah, Whereas yeah. Gallagher's going to be pure profit. Wait, so who you saying should be paired with with Enzo? Or or out of the two, if we're saying Palmer's so, playing ten, what's the best double pivot? I don't, I don't really, yeah, I don't really want to get back into it because I feel like we're getting a bit over time. But I think I'd, I'd like to see Enzo and, and Love. Yeah, have a good run of games to see how that how that works. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's no there's no obvious answer. Let's not go into too much analysis of that. But mm-hmm. I feel like Enzo's just gonna have to be a bit more physical and yeah, and roaming for that to work. But I, I, Gallagher, we love I, you. I'm man. gonna hold my tongue in it because I want to I want to get into that. But we do have to move on, guys, and on to what's second on the agenda. Arsenal. <laughs> so I know, I know, <laughs> I know we need to start this quickly because right, I know man. a guy let's wants kick, to kick, talk. Right, so first uh, sub bullet point on the Arsenal list is um, that's it. Quick. Hey. What's what's the what's the um, what's your thoughts on the game and what is the and what are the implications on the title race given that? <laughs> you know, it's a good thing that we've had a couple of days, isn't it? Carl? I feel like <laughs> if we've done this pod like a couple of hours after, yeah. I can't Remember you've got tomorrow as well? Yeah, I wouldn't be sitting here few, but right? I'll be real. But obviously having a couple of days to, to really go away and think about it, I think um, so it was a disappointing result. I think losing at home as a team that's going for a title is, is always going to be unacceptable, regardless of the, the type of defeat or the, the way that you lose the game. Mm, um, quality of opposition as well. Yeah, I mean quality of opposition, but it's, just, it's one of them things where it's like, a couple of seasons ago, this result, you kind of get over it, you move on to the next game. It doesn't mm. really have any implications on the season. But yeah. when you're challenging sides that have set standards like Liverpool mm-hmm. and obviously City over the last few seasons, like any drop points, of course, they're going to feel, you know, a lot, yeah. there's, there's, there's more emphasis on that, I think. And it feels worse than what it really should be in it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I guess it just, it just reminds us of what the problems really are and the gaps that we have in the side. <laughs> Like we know where it is, so it's not it's nothing that we didn't know. Um, but the team is it's just not clinical enough, isn't it? Like I don't think there's there's not enough. There, there's no ruthlessness in front of goals. It's just, it's just very, you know, everything else to me is there, but we don't have that. Really? We, yeah, to me everything else is there, man. It's like I said the other day. It's everything. It's a team. It's a team for me. That's, like everything's strong, though. Yeah. No, but it's a, it's a team for me that's strong. set up for a superstar to come into, and every and everything else is kind of built. It's okay, yeah, fair. Do you know I what mean, I mean? In terms of, like, for example, I know like, what you're saying, but from a defensive yeah, but, point of view, but, but, like, you but know, a superstar striker over, like, they they overcompensate. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they will yeah, cover. Yeah. Like, I, you saying everything? I, no, but I, when I, I say everything, like Trossard weren't looking too good against. Yeah, but obviously Trossard's like, not. He's not really supposed to be a starting option. Like, oh. if everyone's fit, obviously you got you got Partey to come back into the midfield. You've okay. Got, obviously, I think Jorginho was actually supposed to start the game. He was ill. Because part is not, I don't really feel like it's someone you can depend on. No, of course, but again, it's it's a problem that will be fixed. After mm. I just think what I'm basically talking about is like if if you're a superstar coming into this team, yeah, mm. you look at like you've complained about Mbappe defensively in the past. If he was to come to Arsenal, he doesn't really have to do the same work because the rest of the team is, yeah, is set up. Pattern, yeah, do you get yeah. what I'm saying? So mm. I think it's a good it's a good setup for someone to come into you and just focus on being a game winner. That's it, and that's in my opinion, that's all we really need to go to that next level and just be kind of a, not not unstoppable but to the point where it's, it's very difficult to beat us in it oh. and we're, we're likely to win games so I think that's what we're missing in it just a question there you said Mbappe obviously that's that's an unrealistic expectation like mm-hmm. who who are you sort of looking at to come in as the nine to to change games like we saw against West Ham or is it even the nine position that you want to change I, got, I don't know man when it comes to this there's a lot of things <laughs> like for me yeah, to go into interesting you could keep uh, Jesus and go for Maybe an inside forward you get scored. Like right now, what I, what I would say is like there's there's links to Tony in January, yeah. And as much as obviously I want a striker to come in, yeah. Like I just want to remind everyone that last season we got to we got to the halfway point. And Man City had obviously they signed Harlan. He was scoring a lot of goals, but mm. even halfway through the season, you had Carragher and Neville asking, you know, is is Harlan making City worse? And that was even when he had he was scoring more than a goal mm. a game at the time. Okay, you know, it it could take time for someone like Tony to come into the side and the rest of the team to adjust to having. 
a different prof- profile of striker in it. So as much as he might have an impact, I think you always got to be conscious of like how a January signing is going to impact, yeah. you know, the, the chemistry of the, the team and the squad makeup yeah. in it. So it's all, it's all difficult right now. I mean, it's a problem that Arteta has kind of brought on for himself because mm. he prioritized certain things in the summer. Yeah. Um, and we, as, as I said, we knew these issues existed, but what I really wanted to focus on more was the impact of obviously the decision to sign Declan Rice as our number six. And it's not okay. a lack, it's not like a lack for lack switch in it. So okay. where you've looked at like other sides, like obviously Liverpool has spoken about doing like a midfield rebuild. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people forget that we're also undergoing a, a similar type rebuild. Isn't it? And I think it's different when it's like a lack for lack switch coming in. Like for example, if someone had come in and replaced Granit Xhaka and he's a lack for lack profile. All right. Um, and the number six was a lack for lack. You just expect things to just run smoothly because mm-hmm. it's the same system. It's the same style of play. I think with our number six, Declan Rice is a completely different type of number oh, six to, to Partey. Yeah. Okay. Um, and obviously Tabas is a I different mean. type of, <laughs> yeah, left centre mid to... Are you, are, you, are you kind of coming onto this topic because Declan Rice came under a bit of criticism? Yeah, I mean, he came, that's what I'm media. saying. So obviously he came under people criticism. People say offensively, he yeah. doesn't... He doesn't give what party gives. Yeah, and I think as I said, and and going back to that, <laughs> go, but going back to that Harlem point, it's like it's almost like expecting Harlem to do the same thing that Gabriel Jesus was doing for City in the past, isn't it? They're two okay. different type of players, isn't it? So okay. the team has to adapt to that. I think Arteta obviously has to tweak certain things, and you know we we're getting to a point where it kind of has to start working. Now you've had half a season to put mm. that in place, and we're still not there yet, isn't it? So okay, so question: Does 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 Declan Rice make you worse than? No, 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 no. It doesn't British. make it doesn't make us worse. It okesn't doesn't make, make us worse. worse. Uh, All right, so who's better, Declan I, Rice or Party then? I'd rather have Declan Rice, isn't it? Like, oh, okay. I said already, like when Fabinho, and, yeah, when Fabinho and Rodri were going at it, I don't think anyone was really saying, you know, one is like way better than the other. They're just mm. two different types of sixes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But we right. haven't adapted to bringing in a more defensive type of six, and that's the problem. Like everyone's okay. asking Declan Rice to do the same thing that Party was doing because it works so well. But yeah. like, it's kind of changed my view on football a little bit because even me. I wanted Caicedo over Rice because I thought Caicedo was better on the ball, innit? But in reality, Rice is just a better player. Yeah. And I think it's the same now with our with our striker. So going back to your question about what striker I want to bring in, like someone like Oshiman, cool. In the past, I might have shied away from someone like that because it's like, you're not going to do what Jesus does on the ball. But at the end of the day, the main thing is scoring goals, innit? Oh, okay, so I think Arsenal fans have to take that into account. We just need someone, we just need someone in the box that's, that's going to score in it. And I don't really care what else he does oh, because yeah, yeah. our style of football has changed, isn't it? Like, yeah. Bro, we're playing the ball long to have us. <laughs> like, it's not the same ticket tackle football that we used to play, yeah, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, man. Like, I, I would love to have Bushman come in, but it's like, we're going to have to wait six months, isn't it? Just on the Declan Rice and party point, so do you think maybe, so obviously at the moment your midfield, like let's say your, your number one midfield is Declan Rice, Odegaard God. and Havertz. Oh. Well, not your number one, but the, the one that's played most yeah, yeah. of the season. Yeah. So are you saying for Declan Rice to be the six, because that's what we're talking about, you need an LCM to come in that's that can do some of that like playmaking so you can maybe push your guard mm. more forward or just even nah, have no, a, because, bit more, because I've already a bit more football. Not even because for me, like if you look at if you look at that midfield three and how they've worked kind of over the last month, um Odegaard to me is suited more to the deeper role. So that kind of goes hand in hand with Declan Rice being the type of number six that he is. Okay. And you take away from Odegaard when you do that though. Not for me, because I I don't feel like he's he's better in that position for me than he is further up the pitch. I've really? said this, yeah, I've said this since years Odegaard ago. Oh my god, I got what fourteen goals. That's, and that's just a ba- that's, last a, that's, season, that's a that's a that's a bad, that's a bad that's a bad that's a bad product though of him. Obviously, he plays in that position, but it's it's him on the edge of the box. Cool, he's a good finisher. He can still do that stuff. Like right now, he's playing oh, at all. Well, that's what had you in the title race. Yeah, but like he's he was, he was moving. But mad. again, but again though, that's him on the end of moves. He still does that now. He's still on the edge of the box. Do you get like okay. he plays deeper, he does the build up, and he moves in all phases, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas so you last want him season, in all phases. yeah, I want him to play in all phases and and obviously help out with oh. Rice. So, like even when people were saying Partey was going to come back now, let's say it was Partey, Rice, and, and Odegaard. Like, so we're now going to just put Odegaard back in a position where that like, he was struggling in earlier in the season. Like you're going to end up with the same but, problems. But I feel like that was more Odegaard's fault. Though. No, but it's not though because he's seeing three people in front of him that can't shoot or can't can't take their chances, <laughs> and he, he's taking it upon himself okay. to shoot more in it. So. Yeah. I think the actual midfield itself, to me, they're all right now in the correct role, like, or the right role to get the best out of each of the minutes. So Rice obviously being a very like defensive it's destroyer type six. So. I think Odegaard is is in his best role as like a, a deeper type, okay. you know, midfielder yeah. or eight, 
moving through all the phases and Havertz is obviously having joy just playing off his just Play, kind of being oh, like okay. a Roman striker not so really having like to get midfield? to I think I just think they're all in their good I don't, it's not that I like it but I think right now if you're looking at like the best role for each player they're all playing that it's function so yeah it's, it, it works but then it's like but are you the saying front that three doesn't work with that I don't so know if that's that midfield problem. offensively was defensively perhaps yeah I don't know if offensively they were as effective as party no, but, Jacka, okay so again yeah, look, look, this, this, this is, this is the, overall, that, the overall point I wanted to make here yeah, okay. coming into this pod and I think obviously I said it to you before like we've got a bunch of guys yeah that are like you see in the Avengers you've got Hawkeye you've got Spider-Man <laughs> Falcon, but he's being right. mentored by, by Iron Man and that you feel me you need a Captain America you need Iron Man fam. we don't have that oh, I'm so we've got bare like guys that are just you know they, they can play their role they facilitate us uh, to the main guys yeah, yeah, yeah. but we don't have the main guys okay. Saka's, not a, Saka's not an Iron Man <laughs> Let me start. I, like, I'm talking about like, like the Alexis Facto. Sanchez, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate the Urzils, you, you. you know what I mean? Like yeah. the Thierry Henry's, I've been guy, telling season Arsenal veterans, bro, gunmen. Mm. Wait, we don't do have you think that. Saka will be that though? As of right now, I see yeah. Saka as more like a, he's more like a Di Maria to me. He's a facilitator. That's what, he's hey, a facilitator. Who was the first man to say that? No, no, no. But, 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 no, no, but no, 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 I was the first man to say that that's Saka. No, but the problem is, he's a very good player. The problem is, yeah, is that people think that's a bad thing. That's a good, bro, to get to spawn that from your academy, is a very that's, really that's a that's a fantastic thing. That's a top level yeah. player. No, it's but, not a bad thing. But yeah, I've but, never said and, it's a bad thing. But I said yeah. that. No, it's him. not. It's not a bad thing. But what I'm saying is that. But you, you didn't want that to be. Him. Yeah, you have to recognize yeah. that now. But you know, Bearman don't think. Just, just before you go on, you know, Bearman don't think that. Bearman think like you know a lot of Arsenal fans think Saka can be Salah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But, but let me say let me say this. Let me say this. Yeah, I think based on how he's performing right now in this system, you would say yeah, that's his level. But what, he can still, level. No, 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 no. You say like a Di Maria is like okay. the type of player, the yeah. status within mm. the team is what he realistically is going to be. Yeah. But longer term, we don't know what he, he like. He has capability to go to another level, innit? We'll just see it. We have to I'm go sorry, see how I it develops. I just don't see <laughs> it. No, you don't see it. <laughs> but but see not it. many fans, not many fans even saw him get into a Di Maria level like two, three no, years but, ago. But so. once he got to that level, they all said, they all think, you know, there's bare Arsenal fans that think, Saka can be the best player in the world. Like he can go win a Ballon d'Or. He can. Do you know he, can go, he can go. He can someone be said, your someone talisman. Said, someone and I've always said. said someone, someone said the other day. That. Someone said the yeah, other day though. Like, but someone said the other day like the way that he plays for England, he take he kind of takes a bit more responsibility than he does like in the Arsenal team. Like it seems like he wants to make more things happen, isn't it? Like he does. I watch Saka sometimes, and I just think. Where's the intensity? Like we're we're two 0 down in a game, and you're not yeah. you're not going to get the ball off the centre back. You're not trying to you, you know will us. No, no, no. But you're not going to yeah. will us towards like a victory yeah, or a goal. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. way that I've seen Odegaard do it in the past year, where he's trying, he's really trying to make something happen, and mm. and it, the level of his intensity increases. I don't get that from Saka. Like it rarely happens. Yeah. Isn't it? There's only one game, the United game at home last season. But mm. whenever we're like one 0 two 0 down, you know, it's it's one one. He can produce us a moment, as we saw at Stamford Bridge, but. He's not someone that's gonna go and you know take the initiative and really force the game and and, and get us back into it. Just, so just before you make a, a uh, we we discuss our last topic on Arsenal. I just wanted to come into it and say that because a certain man that you know I've always appreciated is playing some <laughs> beautiful football right now, and that's Philip Foden, right? You see, when, when I look at Foden, right, and he's playing the ten now, and I'm so uh, happy for him. Uh. Yeah, I, I agree and I, I was one of the first people I'm from an opposition fan to say that Saka's been playing better than Foden for a while when I look at Foden pure talent level yeah I look at a player that's capable of being a talisman a level raiser and he, Saka's a very good player but as Jalen said earlier like for me he's the Di Maria he's the support and that I don't see it from him when I look at Arsenal <laughs> no honestly I'm not even it's no agenda here when I look at Arsenal normally it's Odegaard uh, now, all the guys showed me uh, a couple performances last season, yeah, where I'm like, no, nah, this is, he's a level he raiser. Be, yeah, he's yeah, a yeah. serious bad boy. Like, I think it was a Southampton perf- uh, game. These men were moving, washed. Yeah. <laughs> Odegaard started balling out of his mind. And yeah, there's, a, yeah. there's a few games that I thought, Saka don't really, he don't really have that. Like, mm. he's a very good player and he will be a fantastic player for Arsenal. But I just, I just don't see that from him. Whereas Foden... Honestly, the sky's the limit. Pep, please keep him. Well, actually, I don't really want you to keep him the ten, but I like the. <laughs> I, but I don't know. But, but at the same time, I kind of do because I appreciate the player so much that I want to see that. So I just wanted to say that quickly. I wanted to give Foden some prop. He's playing some some beautiful football mm. right now. He it's was Foden, moving. Though, fam. He was Foden. moving mental today. I don't know if you man have nah, seen the, yeah, the clips, yeah, yeah. bro. Foden. Proper dropping the shoulder, shifting man, creating chances. Who needs KDB, ball. man? No, I'll stop that. You need KDB, stop bro. That. Right, it's full I mean, home. you like you like to say though that what's it called? When the brain is yeah, when the brain is playing, you like to say that City are worse than it. Like, yeah, they look worse. 
So do you think that him coming in might upset their balance a little bit? Hundred percent. I think. Uh, I think KDB is one of those guys that's like because uh, he's the <laughs> the Iron Man. You kind of got to play through him. But yeah. in doing so, it takes away from other aspects of it. Yeah, it does. No, it does. Because obviously That's he's, he's yeah, going to get more yeah. of the ball in it. Like he's more of the handle. Yeah, but he balls out though. Yeah, but, yeah he but, does. Like, but, but, I, but I, 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 like, when I watch City games with you, I get annoyed. Because like, you'll see, you'll see like De Bruyne cross. <laughs> oh shoot. And you'd be like, oh, this guy, man. No, but, but it's, it's but good. But what I would but, say. But he creates chances. Well, and what, he scores goals. what you would say is though, is that they, I feel like they force the ball a bit more when he's on the pitch. Because realistically, you want the ball at his feet all the time. And by doing that, I think what he's basically saying is that they don't seem like they control the game as much, but it's worth like the, the sacrifice because he's going to give you the moment, isn't it? Do you it's know what I mean? Yeah. I get it. I'd much rather have the moment than all this control thing that people keep talking about. Control, like, control, being, being control. Gee, just give the ball to KDB, man. And I'm I think, just, obviously, the last, the last point, I just wanted to make a quick point on Arsenal as well. Yeah. Um, headed towards the transfer window. I've seen a lot of fans say, that they feel like we need a backup to Saliba in, in the squad as a priority. Um, and if he gets injured, obviously what's going to happen and blah, blah. But I just want to ask the fans, yeah. It's like, <laughs> would you rather bring in people that are level maintainers or do you want people that are going to raise the level? Yeah, yeah. Do you get, like right now, our first, our first 11, is it good enough, in your opinion, to like be better than a Man City? Like, no, I think no. we can compete, level. No. but it's not a level above, innit? And I think, Let's say, for example, if we were to, I'd rather like take a risk and bring in a striker and risk someone like Saliba getting injured mm. um, and lose it that way than lose it by just like not having a, be- a better team in it. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't really make sense to me. So I think depth is, is quite overrated at the moment. It, it never even used to be a thing like this. Like a couple of years ago, Man City kind of changed the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the, the, the expectations yeah. because they started bringing in like hella players to come off the bench and the quality throughout the squad. Charges. Yeah, it was brazy. So I think. We got to go back to the times where, like, you fix your 11 first, you have your, like, cold 11, yeah, 11 and yeah. then you build depth on top of that. My, my only like, thing with that is if someone asked you this last season in that title race when Saliba was in, but it's, I, it's, I don't it's, think you would have said that. But the thing but is, though, it's, it's like it's, the Kyrgyz kid. He's not, he's not. No, but my thing is, like, right, even man. last season, yeah, like, Saliba's not an injury prone player, isn't it? Like, you plan for mm. certain things that you expect to happen, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I don't think you can expect every single season that Saliba's going to. Get injured, isn't it? Like yeah, it's, no, it's, of course, a, it's a rare. It's going to be a rare thing unless he turns into an injury prone player. So I think player. a lot of Arsenal fans just have PTSD from what happened last year. Yeah. But if we're actually talking about what should be the priority, yeah. bro, the priority has to be bringing in someone that's going to improve the eleven isn't it? and win new games. It's not. It's not someone that might play two or three games a season when yeah. when someone gets injured, man. It's just yeah. I, that's backwards thinking to me. Isn't it? On that but point, anyway, I think you need two players. But yeah. Yeah, yeah so let's cool, let's we got to move on. I know just, just want to quickly say that you know, kind of the the bumps that Tet is c- coming across just kind of shows the fact that the guys are level off Klopp, and How maybe if you guys, sense? maybe maybe if you guys didn't, <laughs> maybe if you sense? guys didn't compare him to Klopp, you're actually the same. Nah, let's, you, like, you, you, same type of coach, you wouldn't be in the mess that you're in now. Let's, let's you wouldn't be in the mess that you're in now. Let's talk about. it. I think they're the same. We can talk about it for like. Let's talk about it. You got like three minutes. So you think because we we lost the West Ham at home? No. Not even. I'm so, just, what, so what is it? No, I just this. think literally the pressure that you men are putting on Teta to win this season that I'm seeing from some Arsenal fans, I don't think it should be that deep. Like I was always saying, before kind of um, a lot of Arsenal fans were putting Arsenal on a mad pedestal and kind of saying that, you know, Teta is going to be better than Klopp comparing mm-hmm. your players to, to Liverpool players, comparing them to City players. I always said, I feel like for Arsenal, of course, you want to win the league this season. But in terms of the job that Teta has done, he overperformed last season. Yeah. And yes, you want to yeah, judge him yeah, to yeah. definitely win. And, and you don't tell Teta it's good enough to not win. Arsenal's mm. a club that want to win majors. Not but really, though. They ain't won one in 20 years, so can they, you say that? No, but they want to get to that, right? Just let me make my yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they want to get to that. But for me, it was like a thing where it's still okay for them to not win this season. But I'll say 2025, he has to win. But obviously, these guys wanted to put Klopp in their mouths, who comparatively... To what Tet is doing right now, Klopp won the Champions League last year. Yeah, yeah. this season was the PL. No, he hadn't. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it was. was. This, it was this season. No, no, it was last season. No, it, was, it, it was this last season. season bro. It was this season. Last season. It was this season. How many years is Tet in now? Four. It's the fourth season. Yeah, this is the fourth season. This yes, is this is the fourth. Yes, it is. It's the fourth yeah, it's season. Fourth Lampard's season, bro. bro. From Lampard's thing. It's like, this is the fourth season. What year do you come in? <laughs> bro, you want to keep it? Twenty nineteen. Huh? Nineteen twenty. He came through, and he came through in like Half the second right. half. All right, fair. This is the full season. So you won. So you won major this year, then. Yeah, but Matt, but fair, fair. All right, fair. That makes sense. I, then. I mean, I get, I get what you're saying, yeah. But the expectation at Arsenal 
changes when you when you hit a certain position. Like okay. he hit a certain level last season, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the main reason why I think fans have put pressure on him is because he decided to spend sixty five million on habits. And when you do something like that, your time your time gets cut in half. But that's if, the, but that's if, the truth, bro. Like you have to live. Man, you live. Make mistakes no, 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 no. But but you make mistakes on players that actually look like prospects, innit? Like if you're buying a player from. Yeah. A, a rival club that has not performed and not been good and you've still gone and spent 65 million on that player of course that's a risk that you got to die by bro. Because how that's been that bad I'm not saying that he's been that bad but it's like okay. no no but you've put 65 million towards him and we've still got like other glaring issues in the yeah, squad you do, yeah. that type of profile that Havertz brings into the squad yeah it's useful but you do that after you've, you've put mm. the foundations in place we don't have we don't have a, a, a left centre midfielder bro so, so, like, so, all right, so, so if you, you, so you don't win the league hmm? No, but I'm saying we should, we should have focused more on targeting someone just to, to have that foundation. Then you bring in oh, the, all right, the luxury yeah, so profile. So if you don't win the league this season, what do you want to do with Vartel? Be, oh, come on, man. Like, well, obviously, he's not going to go... It's so not that, that no, 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 no. But that, let, let's but, not do but that. You know because, is, you're going to be embarrassed. The reason why you're no, going to be embarrassed... Who's going to be embarrassed, though? No one's going to be embarrassed. I'm going to be very disappointed if we don't win the league. I'm going to be extremely disappointed. If you win this season, yeah, you're going to be very embarrassed because you've done too much. No, we haven't. You don't too much in what sense? Yeah, in what sense? In what sense? In, what sense? In, in terms of like how you built the whole squad, yeah, and then like the, from, from that side of things, the names, the names that you have put your players next to, how the is names that, that you put your manager that? next okay, to. Okay, but again, 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 yeah, that's like that's why you're gonna be embarrassed. Like, He's not doing combined levels. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, No, 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 no. But this is the problem that I have here. It's like that Arsenal side. Cool, we might call our players like they're better than this person, or you know, we're better. We have better players than Chelsea or this. Bro, we just we lost to a no, double no, winning. No, 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 no. Don't say that. No, no, hold on, hold on. Let me land. Chelsea. No, no, let me land. Yeah, yeah, but we have. In my opinion, <laughs> we still I have see, players. I that see Real Madrid but, and, and Arsenal combined eleven. Bro, yeah, but again, again, bro, again, again. I think people don't understand that we do have players that are very competitive. If we're going, if we're going, if we're going player for player, like as I said, players like Saliba, players like Rice are going to be competitive in those arguments. That's that's the fact. That's too much. That's a fact. That's too much. What Odegaard doesn't get into some elevens. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. there you go. That's so there's guys, there's guys that you get. Okay, no, but bro, I'm there's seeing elevens and I'm seeing Zinchenko in there. Probably yeah, bring his up, bring his up. Bring his up, bro. You want me to show the Arsenal? Yeah, bring his up. I'll put him in. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested. <laughs> <to say. laughs> but again, going back, to, you, going, back, going back, going back, going back, going back to the original point. Yeah, like again, last season we lost to a treble. We we lost to a treble winning City team. Even calling someone like Saliba better than Van Dijk, cheeky. That's not cheeky though, because a lot of people say that. No, that's cheeky. not something that it's just Arsenal fans. Cheeky. And now you lot are getting up. I've seen Liverpool fans get upset. <laughs> look here. at this. I talked to Arsenal. <laughs> look at it, bro. Look at this Arsenal Madrid. Yeah, let me they've see, got, see got rare and go over Courtois. <laughs> they've got the whole back Courtois, four. No, no, no. Courtois is injured. It, okay. It's rare over Kepa. Okay, still so they've got the whole back four. <laughs> they've got the whole <laughs> back four. Like already is tapped. They've got they've got Rice, Modric, and Bellingham fair, and then they've got Rodrigo on the left, and then Jesus and Saka up top. Is that yeah, but based I mean? on who's fit though, what's wrong with that? This, this is based on who's fit. Oh, Vinny Jr.'s... On, so who's supposed to be in there? So, so um, what's his name? Rudiger's not meant to be in there. No, I think Rudiger... Not over Gabriel, no. Oh, come no. on, man. I'm, bro, I'm being... I'm being oh, really, I feel like Rudiger's cool. bad shot. Like, Rudiger's better than Gabriel. You see what I'm saying? So when you actually start Rudiger's going through it, now Gabriel. you're starting to realise it's, it's, it's not that it's bad. It's it? No, Rudiger's better than Gabriel, in my opinion. Gabriel's okay, but again, player. but you saying that, it's like, you're, you're saying it as if we said it like it's a howler, bro. That's a, bro, that's that's a, a, that's howler, a very bro. good... Rudy no, it's Rudy not. Rudy no, it's not. Gabriel is better than Rudy. Zinchenko over Furlan, Mendy or Alaba is a howler. Alaba's injured. They're both injured. They're literally both injured. Are they both injured? Yes, they're both injured, bro. Alaba's done his ACL. I'll take Camavinga at left back over. Yeah, Camavinga. 100% I'll take Camavinga at left back. That 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 one's... Oh, Undisputed, hundred percent. Right back. Who did, oh, they pick Carver. You see what I'm right saying? You're starting to realize. Like, like, it's not there, bro. Right. You know, it's, not, it's really like but it's even, really not that still, deep. But, but, but even still, you know, some Arsenal bro, fans are overdoing it. Though. Of course, no. Listen, Arsenal fans overdo it. But like, you're even, saying, even when even you're when they're saying they're saying they're No, no, no. But listen, listen, listen. Yeah, you're saying that we're gonna feel stupid at the end of the season. You will. But for losing for losing to a Man City side that are extremely good and under prime pep. Yeah, yeah. What do you what do you want me to be? like? I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be sitting here saying, "Oh, we done too much." No, I'm not gonna be doing not, that. Like, I think, I think, you I think you I'm gonna be, disapp- fans, I'm gonna be disappointed. I'm gonna be you disappointed. Said that you think that you won the league? And yeah, lot, I do. But, but but okay. So if we don't do that now, what am I gonna be? You're not even the stupid, world. You're, you're pretty bad. But even like we're talking like the issues of this world and the other ones in the TL, they're moving mad, bro. Listen. So if you listen to us, what are you saying? Listen. Let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you. Let me let me ask you this. Yeah. So the season after Liverpool won the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. If you had gone and spent. 200 mil in that window, yeah? Mm. And I, and the reason I say won the, the league that season, I think you were far ahead of City, but it was a, you, you were roughly around similar level. Same right? level. Quality, yeah, so yeah. if you go and spend peas on top of that, 
you're going to expect an improvement the following season, though. No? You're yeah. going to expect your team to win the league. No, that's fine. But that's facts. But it's, it's, it's what's coming out of your camp from certain fans. I don't like, think that... Like I don't think that... Like there's a lot of issues in this world. I don't... But I don't personally think, like, Arsenal fans haven't said anything to me that is like, you can't debate that. Do you get it? Like, if you can give me an example of something that can't be debated, then... A, a speak. lot, bro. So what? Like, I feel like a lot of Arsenal fans... Sorry, guys, just to give context to the... To the listeners, Ish is a, is a guy, he's been on the pod before, he's a guy in our group chat, he's an Arsenal ultra. But I said, there's, 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 a, there's a lot of Arsenal fans who talk, for instance, they talk like they're just better than Liverpool, for instance. But I do believe I don't that, think you but are. that's a debate. You, you, but again, but that, but again, I don't think it's a debate. Okay, but that's, no, it is a debate. It is it's a not debate, a debate though. that you're... It is a debate. No, 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 no. The it's reason why I don't think you're... No, 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 that's, no, 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 it's, that's it's a, discu- not, it's a not, discussion, uh, it's a discussion. That's not a plausible argument. To say that, no, I'm not even saying, Arsenal and Liverpool are similar levels right now. To think that Arsenal are better than Liverpool, that's, can't, I'm not even getting on to that. But to I talk think, like, to talk like, I've spoken to some Arsenal fans, seen them on the TL, that they're talking like, don't, don't even, uh, uh, like we're on another level. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. where's nah, the It's basis? definitely not that. It's definitely where's not the that. argument? No, it's not, it's not, it's not. It's not. Where, where's but, the but the, problem, the problem that I have with Liverpool right now, yeah, yeah. is that they finished fifth last season, yeah, so mm. like, now Liverpool fans are using that as a reason to say that they're overachieving this season. When in reality, last season, they should have yeah, just been up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't, I, 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 I don't, I don't like, I don't like, no, 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 no. Let's, let's stop all of that because you keep talking about rebuild, rebuild. Yeah. We had this discussion yesterday. Like if you go back to all the players that you keep saying are the best, best in the world yeah, for their yeah. position are still at the club. But I don't think anybody They expected, haven't gone anywhere. I don't think anybody <laughs> expected Henderson. Bro, when you have four players here in your team that are the best in the world according to their fans, yeah. how can you not be no, up? No, but bro, I mean, we had yeah. no midfield. And, and, and he's talking about no, but, 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 but that's not No, that, that's fine, but I just want him but to hold on to that stand. You can't no, then say, oh, we're over no, But we had no midfield. Yeah. I don't no, think it we doesn't. Should, no, no, we shouldn't no, come out of that because, because even, a challenge. No, but, but, but even now, you're still relying on those players to win you games. Yes, it's, not, have, it's not convincing but we, but we now have a midfield. Like, at least we have no, one. No, but it's, it's not a midfield. It's just a midfield doing a functioning role. That's yeah, but, but last season, last season, but last, but last season but, they but, couldn't do that. Yeah, no, we need, no, we yeah. need what, what they have that winning their games right now and they need what we have in terms of control, innit? Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Like, we, we both have opposite things. <laughs> but yeah, my point is we're violating so we need to move on but no last season my point just just in front of him last season we did not have a midfield Henderson no, and stop saying that you didn't have a Henderson, midfield bro Henderson Jones was Fabinho. there last season Jones you had there. options you could have done certain things Jones wasn't in form he and Henderson bro, and, Henderson and, and Henderson and Fabinho again Jones wasn't a player right let me just let me just make oh a point you, you just spoke bro. about Jones because you're going to talk about underachieving and you did like no Jones is not he's starting to get towards that but he was not a player that can raise a level. Yeah, He's not yeah, a player yeah. that can that can carry guys. We he still Henderson. can't do that now, though. It's the same. Exactly. It's just the same guy, bro. bro. He doesn't need to carry guys because you're Shabon. playing with Endo in midfield, and you're telling He's me that doing, you know right. He's doing okay. He's calm. Right. That's yeah. it. You're calm. That's yeah. all you needed. Fabinho though. and you Henderson. Know what? Do you get my yeah, point? Yeah, what I'm yeah. saying all you really needed was just functional guy, competent guys. Bro. Yeah, yeah. We, that's all we need. But we didn't have that. Yes, you did. Henderson and Fabinho were good. No, stop trying to say that they were. Stop trying to say. No, stop trying to. Fabinho. So when they when they went on their run at the end of the season, was Fabinho playing? Yes. yes, but okay. But why did he turn good? Because Klopp changed the tactics to something that you man asked for him to do early in the season. No, bro. He you just what you you make changes, you make things happen. No, if you're even, a good even, manager, you would change no, it early in, in the season. Tactics, bro. For being not playing like how he was playing, it's unacceptable, bro. <laughs> Listen, bro, as yeah, I said, I've been playing that well in Saudi. I, I, I am, I'm not going to hear now. Neither is no, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to hear now that you man finishing fifth last season is a reason. I didn't why. say that. I as, said, as, I said, as, as a reason, I said top four. No, no, but you said that they're now overachieving because of that. This huh? isn't overachieving. No, this I is said, just where should be. Or someone's like, bro, he's, bro, 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 I'm, I'm I'm saying. Saying. the media. No, the media. <laughs> the media. You see what I'm saying? Hey, no, 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 Just on that point, yeah. The media said, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 bro, stop no, saying that. They did. They did. They did. They, did. they, did. they said that Klopp this season ain't challenging. Like, no, you happening. said that. No, no, he said. No, I didn't. He said. No, this is what you said. This is what he said. This is what he said. Yeah, he said this squad is going to finish second, but Klopp is a genius, so maybe he might he might make us challenge. That's what you said. That sounds like you. Exactly. 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 No, that's exactly. How does that make sense? That's a, but it's second because you should be competing regardless. It's second, it's second yeah. not with the players that you have. I said we'll challenge, but we'll drop off. That's what I thought would happen. But Klopp is a genius. But then hold on, hold on, hold on. But, hold on. but, but, but Jay, before you come in, <laughs> Wait, what other man no, said, but he's talking it's never happening. In the future because we're only halfway through the season. So how do you but, know you're not going to drop off? No, I don't think we're going to do now. Yeah, but you think. You're yeah. predicting. Yeah. We don't know that. But no, but even where we are right now. No, but even where we are right now. Is what? 
media didn't have us there. Other fans didn't have us there. Oh, they come said, on, They man. said we'd be fighting for Bro, top four. we said before the season. No, I, you I said, said that. before the you season. You said that. Ask, be a three ask, ask, rap, ask that bum rap. By the way, United lost again, you know. <laughs> You're a bum, you know. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm just going to tell rap right now. United lost again. Listen. These men are serious bums. But you see with Liverpool, like, I just think, yeah, cool. You man got you man got your game winners. You got you got what you need. But at the end of the day, the core of the team to me is still the same as as during those prime club years, isn't it? Mm. So all this well. rebuild stuff. Yes, you might have a mid. You, you have a midfield rebuild, but it's not a squad rebuild. Yeah, it's not. You know, you know that when City lost J- company, J- 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 you lost Yaya Toure, you lost Aguero. Those are big Silver. players to replace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These men haven't lost that. It's not a rebuild. We've lost some big players, but anyway, you're. I'll, I'll give it to you right now because we need to move on. West Ham. So West Ham, obviously, big result against Arsenal. They're also sixth in the table. They're doing yeah. really well this season. What's yeah, our thoughts well, on West Ham quickly before I ask a question about Moyes? Um. <laughs> There's not much to say. Yeah, like, yeah. I think they're doing well. I think they're doing well. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's one of them clubs. We're talking they've... about big clubs. No, it's not even that. I'm going to ask about your club. You've got plenty to say. Listen, 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 my friend. Relax. West Ham are doing well, but yeah. as I said, like mid-table clubs throughout the season, like they're always going to be periods where different clubs pop up in that top six or top five yeah. or whatever it is, isn't it? Like they're inconsistent. So you don't think they'll maintain it to them? It's season. not about them maintaining. It. I just think at different points, like you're going to have a Brighton that's in there. You're going to have like obviously Villa yeah. up there now. Mm. Spurs have obviously dropped out. You know, people are going to rotate yeah, throughout yeah, the whole yeah. season. It's only really like the last ten games where you start to see mm. like, cool. This is who's fighting for mm-hmm. you know yeah, Europa League yeah, positions. Yeah, yeah. This is who's fighting for Conference League and whatever and. Are West Ham not in the Europa League as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, no, but my point about West Ham is like, do you like what they're doing? Like, is there anything commendable about? I think them? it's very like, like a lot of it's, people it's have old, said, it's maybe old fashioned I'll... football, isn't it? Like, yeah. it, it, it's not, it's not pretty, but at the same time, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, mm-hmm. I've said, the, I've said already, like, if West Ham went yeah. to Arsenal and, and played a completely different way with this particular squad, they would have lost, didn't it? They yeah. would have lost the game. So that's, that's definitely away from home, you. Got to do what you got to do to win. And now looking mm-hmm. back at it, like, no one's gonna be saying at the end of the season. You know, West Ham, they finished sixth place. Oh, but they played shit at Arsenal. Like, these men mm. partnered up. Like, no one's saying that. Newcastle people, partnered up spare times last Some season. people say, so West Ham are actually doing a lot better than they were doing last season where they yeah. were, like, kind of struggling a bit. They weren't really pulled into the relegation scrap, but they weren't too far off. Mm-hmm. And it's something like, at this point from last season, they're, like, 10 points better off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, they sold Declan Rice. So some people are saying that <laughs> Declan Rice couldn't have been that influential to the team for that to happen. <laughs> no, but I heard that midweek, yeah, but... <laughs> my problem is no, it's no, no. mad nasty it's no, 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 mad no, nasty but, but my thing is is like oh, with the, start, with the, the way that they played against us like I don't know if West Ham fans are going to try and sit here and say that Declan Rice playing in that that setup would not have made them even more resolute than what they were yeah so I don't I don't really see the, the debate so, so but how come they got better without him I mean got better and <laughs> actually like <laughs> You know, they you know got, better you got better without him. got better without him. Yeah, but you know when you say got better, like cool, your result, your results have improved. But has the team overall got better? I think yeah, the 100%. team's. I think the team's better. And what would you put that down to? Kudos. Uh, so, Piquet, so I would say I think you see when you're at that level, yeah. And I made the point to uh, a guy who made in the team. I actually think it was Disu. Um, so I made the point because I think when you're at that level, yeah. Uh, you you want more of a team. Mm. So being able to take Rice out, who's a who's a fantastic one player, and actually get like three players, three or four players that they brought in that can raise the whole level across Mm. the pitch. If you do that well, that will improve your team. It's like a different sort of level when you need those pivotal one sort of signings. So that's why I feel like they're a better team because they've gone and done that. Like you think Mm. Kudus, is it, who's the name of the pivot? Kamara? No, it's not Kamara. That's the Villa guy. Uh, Alvarez? Alvarez, Alvarez, that's it. They've got him in, uh, Ward Prowse. All of these guys have made like a big difference and they're very suited to their style of football as well. well, Not thing, not. There's another centre back they yeah. got us. Like you think about you think about the way War Prowse is whipping in free kicks, mm. kudos is you know quality and transition, quality as a player. Amazing, amazing signing. Well. Yeah, really good signing. They did well too. I think out, out of out of the, the people that they brought in, obviously Kudos has probably had like the biggest impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's been their best player. In terms of actually winning games, I think um the midfield's obviously done a good job in terms of just again being stable. Um they brought in experienced players, but Kudos has been like the main mm-hmm the main guy and, and I just don't I don't understand how like top six sides continuously keep letting players like this slip through the web a little bit it's oh, just so you bit. feel like it's a big slip to let Kudus go to West Ham I mean you, was in for him though, no? yeah but that's what I'm saying like someone like that was there on the market for 40 mil mm-hmm. like Ajax were willing to sell there was it wasn't it wasn't like it was going to be a hard negotiation yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, linked to Liverpool obviously Arsenal were interested Chelsea were interested <sighs> at points mm. and it's like all of them fumbled, have, have said no 
And he's come now and, and adapted to the Prem probably quicker than most signers. And you just know in two years' time, all of these clubs are going to be he's looking at him again for double million. the price. And yeah, it's just like, yeah, yeah. I just don't understand how it continuously keeps happening, it? So, I don't know, man. I, just, I find it so weird because like, like, you think, I'm not a director of football. Jalen's not a director of football. We watch football. I was watching Kudus here, and you know when you're so convinced a guy is gonna translate to the league, like mm. me and Jane were both watching Kudus and said this guy is gonna pop off yeah, in the league. Yeah. A top club should sign him, and they let him go to West Ham. And now in a couple of years, I guarantee I am actually so sure, yeah, Kudus is gonna be bought bought for upwards of about eighty mil. Mm. Yeah, but two, that's the problem. In, 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 I don't, I don't in two years. He's only twenty three. Like he was already that level. I get it when you know, for instance, even someone like Mudrik. You know, I think mm. clubs were good in terms of to see his potential and get onto him. I, th- I think they paid too much. But even someone like him, if he came into the league and say a West Ham bought him or something like that, because he looks a little bit more raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's another few players, no one else that like, kind of straight comes to mind. But Kudus, I was seeing Martinelli. all of the, le- <laughs> I was seeing all of the things that made me see that this guy was a guy who was of the level and they've, they've let him go to West Ham. So it's disappointing. He's not going to be, West Ham aren't pressed for peace. So. It's, it's not. Yeah, I just think like the price, the price, like compared to the market, that like, is, it's a no brainer. But, to me. It's low but risk. would he have stayed at Arsenal and been on the bench the whole time, bro? I, don't, I, I think he, he, I, think he, would, I think he would have been willing to do that. Like not stayed on the bench, but like you look at the way that our attack's moving right now, like he would have got opportunities. We've had injuries this season as well. I wouldn't um, have liked him on the left though, but he can do. No, nah, but again, like I, I, I think he's so versatile that he could play. Three or four different roles. Like he's played, he played in he played in the the middle of the park for Ajax a few times as well. Yeah. I think there were well, rumors fuck. that he might play in the number eight role for us. Like there's so many different yeah, things yeah. he could have done in it. So but Ajax, I saw him play eight. I saw him play right wing, and I saw him play false nine. Mm. Balled out every single one. He scored a mad goal against us when he was playing false nine. Bro, I remember the goal still. Yeah, 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 you remember Quite Champions League group stage game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Moyes, ah, right, talk to me. A lot of uh, West Ham fans have said that, uh, so it looks like he's going to get a contract extension. Mm. Obviously, like Jalen said before, he plays quite quite a pragmatic style of play that doesn't really inspire um, a lot of the West Ham fans. Mm. Okay. They're, say, they're saying that. Cares. Bro, the man just won the European <laughs> trophy. Facts. And they're sixth place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jalen's already come, what are you complaining yeah. about. A lot of them are saying that they, they don't want him to go on. They want to get a manager who plays better football. Well, so you not play your little tippy tappy high. football, but you're not going anywhere. Like, respectfully. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get any better than this. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. the truth. Well, bro, so he's, he's in sixth place. He just won a conference league trophy. You're, you're through in the Europa League, top of the group. Like, what more do you want? I don't I don't understand. So you think they're, they're getting too big for their boots? Facts. Not, no, it's, it's not that. I just think, be careful what you wish for, innit? Because when you're at that point, I think when you're at that stage and your expectations are a bit lower than the, the top clubs and Moyes has been very open in interviews about where West Ham are at and what they should expect. Mm. Like, some, of them, some of them haven't liked that. I don't know if yeah, you no, see but West Ham. But, but, like bro, West Ham said, I, I see a bit of them. Keep them grounded, but at the end of the day, if you yeah, start playing a more expensive, though, yeah, you yeah. know when you start playing a more expensive like style of football, yeah, like mm. it's very... The type of players that you got to bring in are a lot more like niche profiles, isn't it? So it's harder to recruit. It exposes the, the quality of, of your Yeah, and, and until you have a full squad of players like that, when players get injured, it's, it's way more difficult to deal mm. with something like that, isn't it? So the way he's playing now, in my opinion, like, there's sense. nothing wrong with it, man. What did these lot want? I, like, I think it would be worse if he was like playing a pragmatic football and was like 15. Yeah. And, yeah. and they yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool, I'm, I'm expecting to sign up. Yeah, if but if he's position. doing it, it's working, you're Pro. still in Europe, you're doing well in Prem. I think the issue. problem is he's Give been him a, the season. a little bit up and so obviously to be fair he was like I think it was 14th last season like 15, 14th yeah yeah but obviously they won the conference league mm. he is doing well in the league this season but I think it's a bit the fact that they don't know maybe he'll drop off like his his league position is coming in they've been decent yeah, yeah. but it's not even like say every season it's top 7 guaranteed he has done well though in a, in a couple of seasons so. yeah but even like, like guaranteeing top 7 in this Premier League is tough bro yeah, yeah, you know, like, you actually don't know who's gonna got be a trophy, possible. which is mad. Gee, so like, take that, take the season like one game at a time, see what happens, see who performs, see who doesn't perform, make your changes, and then maybe January they might grab someone yeah. to, just to like bolster it a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, really I, I, I was just presenting about. the argument because I, I wanted West Ham fans to be heard, but I do think realistically, not even a big team, you need to, you need to be, <laughs> oh, they got a hold it realistically, you need to be honest with where you are, if a pragmatic manager is getting results, you've mm. got to give him time, that's calm man, give them Bielsa, innit, <laughs> let's see how that goes, give if them he, Bielsa, I think a lot of them were saying they want Dezavi, 
Yeah, go, but why would you go to West Ham? Why would you go to West Ham? West Ham's a bigger club than Brighton. There's no way he would do that. Like if he's no, gonna, bro, West Ham's a big. Like, if Deserby like, if Deserby leaves Brighton, he's not going to West Ham, bro. Yeah, he's going yeah. to a club bigger than that. You feel me? What, 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 That's what, a sideways what, step. It, it depends, though. Some clubs have kind no, of gone. No, some, no, no, no. Some no, managers no, have done that step. No way. No way. The only the only way he goes to West Ham is if he used to get sacked by Brighton, and then that's the next job that comes up. That's it. There's no way you he don't trained. think he'd leave to go to. No, he shouldn't go. There's no he? reason to. Yeah. But but sometimes they're able to attract players. Like you've seen managers uh, nah, kind of go, no, no tr- absolutely, kind no of go just play. like do that little jump in the league. No way. It don't no make way. sense. It wouldn't make sense for him. I wouldn't no. say it. But, but for him, you're saying that there's no there's no way they could attract him. No way. No. no tr- they could attract him. I reckon David Moyes. No, 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 I reckon David Moyes probably on double the PC zone. That doesn't matter, bro. There's no way. You think he'll wait? Yeah. The Zabi already looks like he's getting a little bit frustrated. Of course, but to West Ham. We, I remember I saw man. an interview the other day that he's, he doesn't like the fact that obviously Brighton, they play, they do, play, they do kind of get that niche player that can play good football yeah, yeah, yeah. because of where they're, they're at. They of course yeah, can't so. attract a big player who plays that type of football. They have to get young. And players. he keeps losing big players as well. Like, yeah, but he's 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 commenting on the fact that that's frustrating. No, I know. He said he said he doesn't like the policy. He did. There was a player that he singled out the other day. I think it was at Belaybuka. He's playing in midfield, and he mm. said. Like he doesn't want to have to play someone like that, but it's, it's club policy. <laughs> is that what he's saying? No, he just said like obviously. He's violated. No, it's not that he doesn't want to play him, but he's saying like you can see because he's a young player, he makes mistakes and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he makes, he'd he rather makes have mistakes and build. Yeah, like, like he'd build. rather have someone in there that's that's more experienced and more sure. And that's what I was even saying the other day. Like people are judging Deserby right now based on how he's doing at Brighton, but I just feel like if he went to a bigger club and the expectation was you know to bring in better players, they can hold on to their best players. I think he would do better and probably be better defensively as well. Okay. All right, a few minutes left. Has the quality of the Premier League gone up or down? Point from Carragher. Um, I I I think so. I do actually think it has. Um, I think the level of the mid-table clubs has, has gone up. Yeah. I think okay, yeah. at the, bo- the bottom of the league is always going to be. It just depends on kind of who comes up and what yeah. they decide. Even to then, do. the bottom still no relegation. No, sides, no, the relegation. And then from poor. up from that, up from about seventeenth, I can't like the pack. But I think the club say that we struggled against Luton. You struggled against Luton. You struggled against. Yeah, but, nah, but again, it's a different it. thing. Like, it's, di- it's a bit different for me. Like I think you look at like the Sheffield United, the Burnley's, blah blah. blah. They're, they're, they're teams that majority of the teams in the league were still expect to beat, it. Mm. but I think. Even I made the Luton, point to, to Io earlier, did. like, you know, when Liverpool were kind of like in their prime and they were in their like good period, they were so much like better physically than other clubs. Like yeah, their yeah, press yeah, was yeah. so much better. They were mm. way better in the jaws. I think over the last few years, a lot of the mid-table clubs now can deal with that a bit better. They brought mm, in profiles that yeah, 100%. Are, are better physically. They're now able to play out as well. They've got yeah, a lot so more profiles. So they can play out of presses from the top side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But also like, we, we just spoke about someone like Kudus. Like, players are slipping away from the top six and finding their, themselves at, at clubs that are mid table teams. Mm. You look at like, someone like Piquet has ended up at West Ham. Yeah. Kudus has it's ended up there. Mad, you know? The yeah. RB's ended up at, at obviously Aston Villa. Villa. So they have threats going forward now as well that mm. can actually punish the top side. Yeah. Um, so if you look at like all of those three areas, like that's the reason why you know top sides are starting to drop points to these mid table yeah, sides. I do think the quality has has increased just because those profiles of players are. No, cool, I think like, I, I really like that point that you made about the signings. Like you think about guys like Kudus, guys like Paqueta, guys like Diaby. Them mm. being at West Ham and Villa just shows a crazy quality of the Premier League that we're able to attract the sort of players. Like, I think any other league, they're going to the top players, top teams in top that clubs, league. Yeah, 100%. Like, you think about. I remember the quality of the goal that Kudus scored against United. Was it United? Yeah, mm. with the right foot. Bro, yeah, that, that's a that's a top. Nunes Nunes didn't even give me that. That's a, that's a top six quality attacker. Even what mm. we've seen from DRB Paqueta, he's a top top player. So yeah, I think that's definitely. And I showing. think as well, like tactically throughout the league, managers react to things over time. I think like certain behaviors or certain tactics, like they're instilled at the top, and then they kind of filter their way down in it because the teams lower down have to react to obviously yeah. what the bigger clubs are doing. And I think. Over the past few seasons, they've done that. But because the tactical level at the top of the Prem is so high, obviously with, with guys like Pep and obviously what, what Klopp has brought in, mm. like that's just filtered throughout the whole league, isn't it? And yeah, a lot of people pick it up. But, but yeah. I think that filtering process has been faster because the quality is higher. Like, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Trust but, your players but what, to and, and obviously roles. they have the money to actually react. That's yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah, like yeah, Clubs yeah. in the other leagues, they don't have the P's to even like react to what the top clubs yeah, are doing. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So they've been able to, to respond to that. And I feel like right now, I don't want to say that it's the, the toughest season um, for the top sides really to, to gain points. But as I said earlier, like a lot of the away games people are going into. Bro, you're, and it's you're like, shook. you're just thinking to yourself, mm-hmm. there's so many different ways we could lose this game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, bro, you're going away to certain places this season. Wolves. Do you know mm, what I'm saying? Forest, Even going away to West Ham. Forest. And you're, and, you're, and you're a little worried. You're thinking, 
you know, there's a couple of ways that we could lose this game. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't think anyone, any of the top six have had an easy game against Wolves away. And I think, yeah, the, definitely the, the level of the league across it is, is, is fantastic. But I do think, if we're talking about City Pool era, for instance, where, yes, those clubs were far ahead of the rest of the league. I don't think looking at Arsenal, Liverpool and City, they're not of that level. They're not as complete. Liverpool and yeah, City, when I looked across the team, you're looking at six, seven all-stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Six, seven world-class players, uh, best in their position. And even the other guys, they're solid. Mm. City, Arsenal and Liverpool, I'm seeing a couple gaps. Arsenal, the striker, the LCM. The Liverpool, the DM. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Striker and left wing, still not that convinced. City, mm. the pivot. Rodri's partner, they put a couple guys in there. Every single one, I've been like, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, left wingers well, not right. been that convinced. Grealish, meh. Doku. Doku. I like yeah, Doku. But Doku's not like he's not. He's still what, young. Yeah, he's not a superstar like. Yeah, know? he's still young. You know, you know, bro. Them times we're talking about would, City, I, would, bro. When they were playing as well, you think about the quality of the games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like no, that's that's what I'm saying to you. Yeah. Like, even with like. I go back to like oh nine ten times when Chelsea and United both got to the Champions League final year, and I looked mm. at both of those lineups, <laughs> and it's just experience, it's quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just all like, star after all star, yeah, bro. And, and I, I can't wait for Arsenal, Liverpool, and City to get to that point where it's just yeah. like they're all complete. Season, hold on. They're, Question then, yeah, is it that the mid table teams have increased their standard, or the top teams have then decreased? Both, like both, 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 both. But I think it's actually mid teams have increase more than the top teams have dropped off I don't yeah. think the top teams are that far off it's about one or two signings mm. yeah. I think this summer I feel I feel like two out of three will get it right there's always one that jams it's tough though two out of three will get it right with their signings and we'll, and we'll see a lot of quality from those teams and then mm. probably the third one will again be in the title race but probably drop off because I think if you're if the Liverpool team that won Prem plays the current Liverpool team they're smoking this team oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. 100% yeah, okay, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, yeah, they're two. The Liverpool team that played this team, they're just gonna physically, absolutely dominate this yeah. team. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like the Liverpool team that, that of the old, they'd win this league easily. But the City team as well, we'd win the team, we'd win this league as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah I yeah, mean, yeah. they I they, they were hitting I what like they hit what 190 points over two seasons yeah, as well yeah, as yeah, the yeah. City team. This the league is gonna be won late eighties, late eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Still, I don't think the. When I look at the title race now, like obviously you're projected for 84, like we're oh, projected okay. for 80 points, like oh, well, so halfway yeah. through the season, there you go, yeah. 42 points. So, yeah. like, when I, look from that, stats today, you know? when I look at it from that point of view, like, I, I worked out like for us to touch 90 points or something, we would have to win that like, 16 out of 19 games or something, which as of right now just seems very unrealistic. Mm. And, um, I'm thinking that City are also going to have to, you know, put up that pace as well. I don't see them, but you trust they, them, they, to they, do no, 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 they don't get to this, it's possible, mm. but I've already said. I think City have dropped a level, but the level that they've dropped to is still, still high, high anyway. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Do you yeah, know what I mean? They're, they're too, they're too Yeah, high. because the level they're coming from is like unreal. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> but yeah, I think late 80s, probably like 87, 80, 88 points is, is what's going to win the title this season. Yeah. And all three of the teams are capable of touching that in it. So I actually think it's going to come down a lot to the games that we play against each other, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. And obviously right now, I think Arsenal are top of that trio. Like, I also think it's like the, the games we play against other big clubs. Mm. Who can who can who can nick wins away at United, Newcastle, C- Chelsea? City haven't actually been great in the, the top six games though. No, they haven't, we haven't been the best been? either. A lot of yeah, we're, we're at the top of that table. That's Arsenal what I'm saying. Been doing like, well. we, bro, that's what I'm saying. When we're losing points, like we're dropping points to like West Ham and Fulham at home, bro, that's that's unforgivable. Like, <laughs> you know but I think that's what, what do you think is unforgivable because of the level you're expecting City and Liverpool to be at, or because of the stage of the season? No, it's, just, it's unforgivable. It's no, but it's not about it being early. It's still unforgivable, isn't it? Because like you should go in for a title you just shouldn't be like Fulham went down to 10 men bro yeah, yeah and we drew 2-2 two, two. Yeah. like <laughs> this, you know but, but I think saying? that will happen while you don't have gunmen yeah no no 100% yeah. 100% of course it's gonna it's gonna happen and, that, and that's what, like I think I asked someone this before and I, I think it was Toby I asked yeah like do you think Liverpool getting a DM like would have more of an impact than Arsenal getting a night Oh, that's a good question. I think Arsenal, I think Arsenal go to a higher level with a nine than you may yeah, go to Yeah, it depends on the six. quality of your... Yeah. Just in so terms of like the extra If you get world-class each. Yeah, like yeah. if you were to get world-class six and we got a world-class nine, I think we would have like a bigger increase. A bigger like job, yeah, but I do right. think like better points. Right. Slap Rodri in your team, slap Harland in, in Arsenal. Yeah, yeah like I, I feel I like... Would, I would prefer Declan, you know. Right, that's another Give them Declan, but, but even if they have Declan, I still see you, man, with like a front three that's not... 
Like it's it's the, like Salah's yeah. obviously there, but it's still the thing is we still, we still, I feel like we need both. I was telling Toby mm. the other day, I was discussing with him, and I was saying I think we need a DM and we need an attacker. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah. or we need one of these attackers to wake Whereas up. Because I feel like we don't need to, but like LCM is obviously it's nice, but we yeah. don't need one. We just need a nine, bro. We just need realistically. A yeah, I do think the nine probably takes you to. I think we explode. There's game. There's games that like because right now, like I wouldn't say there's a C, there, There's not really a game that we've dropped points in where I'm like. We didn't deserve like we didn't deserve a point from that game, innit? There's no okay. game. There's not like even the games that we've lost. We lost the Villa for Liverpool edge. Do you know what no, my no, thing no, is? No, I, I don't. I don't, no, I don't no, really you deserve the point. I think a point. You, a point I think is you deserve a, fair a point. I don't think we deserve to win, but I don't think like I don't look at it and say, "Oh, we deserve to lose that game." Oh, I'm like, not really looking at. I but, like but again, that's it. Majority of the game, say there, say like the Newcastle game. I don't think we deserve to lose. Like we lost the game, but it was a tight game Dubious like one. yeah and, and those are the type of games where it's like you bring in a nine and you, you don't lose those yeah. like you might you even make a win with, with that is though yeah I think if you man bring in a nine it puts you to like the higher bracket of still that second tier like, yeah, like yeah it doesn't yeah. actually raise all, your no, I, feel the like it, I feel like it depends how good the nine is you know no but the nah. thing is you, you say you get that, a brazy yeah, nine like it, they, they're kind of patterned but we do have no to but because finish. Because we're so tough, <laughs> like we're <wilding. laughs> but because, because, because we're so, but because we're so tough to beat, it's like I just feel like the nine is is, is all that's left. But like wait, the wait. nine that you're expecting is a nine that should just score chances that you should score anyway. Yeah, do you know, no, like, but, you but mean, but it's not someone doing something. If you look at them right now, the head defender keeper's a bit stiff. I feel like when you, a top team's got a brazy player every position, mm. Saliba's quite brazy. I even feel like Gabriel might get to that level. He's looking real good. Rice, I think, is a hell of a DM. And then they've got Odegaard. Odegaard. And then if they get a oh, crazy striker, it depends the level of striker they get. I don't think they're going to get a crazy one. I feel like they're going to get an, a strike. I reckon it's going to be Oshiman or Tony. Mm. Both of those guys, for me, have a level to go before they're the type where you're like, yeah, yo, long. They're not Haaland, did it? Mm. When City got Haaland, we all said long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long. Mm. I don't really think any of them are like, But again, the again though, like, it's like, I look at like Aubameyang. Yeah. If Aubameyang was in his team, like we would, we would come to be nah, on the time. Nah, nah, nah. No, no, no. The, prim, the prime of Bamiyang, I still think nah, we would. No, nah, we do, nah, bro. Nah, we I do. didn't rate that guy like that. No, no, no. In no, big no. games, he'd be, he'd be, he'd be meaty. No, nah, because you even go back to Bamiyang, like what he was doing when we won the FA Cup. He won the Cup for us. Against, yeah, but you are. We played, Ch- we played Chelsea, you played City. You beat both of them nah, for us, bro. Nah, nah, nah. I can't, I you can't argue that. I don't feel that guy like that. He did play That's fine, but at the end of the day. He's a top player. I think if we have. He's a top player, he's not. You know, we have a goal scorer in the team. It goes You have been here for a while, with it? I'm not even. I'm not even trying to be. I'm not even on a. So out of all the teams, I'm not out even on the, a patronizing. thing. Out of, out of all the top. Out, no, 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 no. We ain't doing this. He's chicken. He's chicken. He's chicken. He's chicken. I'm not. I'm not hearing this. He's right. He's right. I'm not hearing this. Oh, I'm not hearing this. Yeah, I was saying you ain't been there for a while. I'm not hearing this. Some guys have just come back to the top. Now they acting like they beat it before. All right, all right. Abamyang is not the difference. I'm so sorry. Abamyang is the difference, bro. He's not. He's not. He would be. He's not that good. He would be. If we had Abamyang in this team, we win the league. Anyway, man, thank you guys. That's another episode of The Rondo. We will be back next week. Big love to all. Like, subscribe, and all them things there. Mm -hmm.